Greetings, every pony. I am Keyframe. I look at point A, point B, and everything in between. And today, I have a question for you. What would have life been like without the rain boom? Or more specifically, what would the main six's lives be like without the sonic rain boom? As we saw in the season one episode, Cutie Mark Chronicles, each of the main six's cutie marks were influenced by the event of Rainbow Dash's first sonic rain boom. Whether it be the colors it produced, the guiding rainbow arcs, the boulder shattering vibrations, the frightening noise, the mysterious magical qualities, or the extraordinary feat of performing the stunt, this event set the course for each of the main six's destinies. But, what if it never happened? What if Dash didn't fly fast enough to break the sound barrier? What if there was no guide, no switch, no stimulant, no inspiration? What would the main six do without the spark the rain boom set out? Would they have found different callings? Would they have found one at all? Or was there already some sort of cosmic <coughs> celestial <coughs> force that was already inevitable? Personally, I like to think that the main six would have found different callings and gained cutie marks in different aspects of their talents. A good fanfiction that I would recommend to see the potential in this theory would be The Rock Farmer's Daughter by Sketchaholic. While not exactly a without the rainboom story, it shows a very interesting interpretation of what Pinkie Pie would have been like if she didn't see the rainboom, along with the life of Cheese Sandwich, who was indirectly affected as well. I would also like to recommend this video by Nikki V, which actually inspired me to come up with this question. It's worth a watch, even though it's one of his earlier videos. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Post a comment below or link me a video response and I'll read or listen to him. Hey, if I like one a lot, I may use it as an example on my next video. However, a few constituents. Do not make your comments novel-sized, please. If you have a lot to say, create a journal entry on DA, Tumblr, etc and link me the article or create a video response. That way, I can link it in the description of the next video so everyone can see your full thoughts. And unless it is a link to said article, all answers to this ask must be made in the YouTube comments only. Any comments made on Tumblr or DA will not be read. I can't wait to see your answers to my question, but till then, let's see the answers that you guys had for the last guest video. Has fan content changed your perception of the show, for better or for worse? Your responses were all very interesting, but there seemed to be many in the same boat. Most of you guys stated that while fan content changed your ideas on the show, it's actually improved your viewing experience rather than diminish it. One great comment to show this was from Digicate813, who stated that because of them being indulgent to Doctor Who's and assistant by Bald Dumbo Rat and Doctor Who's Adventures by Pony in a Box, they got into both Doctor Who and the actual show. And it excited them to no end when the show pointed out the fandom it ain't easy being breezy. Then there are examples from ponies such as Uber Uber Elite 95 and Grass Hope that stated the fandom's interpretations of underdeveloped ponies like Carrot Top with Beyond or Garden and Nightmare Moon with Past Sins have given these and other ponies new depths and layers. And that while they could separate that from the actual show's canon, it makes them think deeper about the show. Wolfkeen, a Let's Player and Pony vlogger you should all check out, made a cool video response. Not just discussing how certain fan animations affected his views, one being an unnamed animation discussing the mute vinyl theory and the other being Children of the Night, but also how the question can be applied to other properties as well, like shows, movies, or video games. It's worth a look. And it wasn't only you fans who dipped your hooves into the conversation, but other analysts as well. The two I'd like to point out being Can Cream's statement on how it was the creations of the fandom that influenced his characterization of Ditty Doo, and on a counterpoint, Silverquill who stated that the fandom's presentation of Spitfire as this really easygoing pony caused him somewhat surprise and even discomfort at her interpretation in Wonderbolt's Academy and... <sighs> Rainbow Falls. Another video, another video. This leads to the other side of the argument people discussed when the show breaks a fandom's interpretation and it disappoints them. This ranged from minor disappointment of the eye color of a character to sadness and outright contempt of the knowingly missed character and story opportunities due to Hasbro's practices. The biggest example of the negative side of fan content's influence came from Demonic Knight, 
who stated that the Reharmonized Pony series almost ruined every future appearance of Discord after his reformation. Wow, season 4 must have been very fun for you, dude. Either way, both sides of this argument are understandable, and every pony's individual stances just depend on how well, or how much you choose, to separate Fanon from Canon. I'm Keyframe, I look at point A, point B, and everything in between. And I need to come up with a new question. See you, every pony.